Today we're looking at 12 strings, specifically affordable import 12 strings from two of the biggest brands. Gibson's Epiphone line with their Hummingbird and Guild's 12 strings are always awesome. Which one's gonna come out on top? Stay tuned to find out. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for customized swag and check out our new podcast. It's called The Fretboard Confessionals, wherever you get your podcasts. We talk about guitars and basically what we talk about on the channel. All kinds of, we, we go further than that. I like the last video or episode we did where we were trying to decide, okay, should this go on the YouTube channel? Should this go on the podcast? <laughs> it's a crossover episode. That was great. Every time. So today we're looking at two 12 strings. Uh, this is the Inspired by? Inspired by Gibson Hummingbird 12. Nice. And then we got ourselves the uh, F2152E Natural. Very nice. It's a good time, you know what I'm saying? And uh, right off the bat, you know, this guitar is 48 pounds. I weighed it right before. I want you to feel this. For actually. real? No, it's it's not 48 pounds, but I was feel like, how no, heavy it's not. that is, dude. That's, you know what? So sometimes people wonder, are things neck heavy? Yes, and you know what? <laughs> no, dude? it's fine. That's the get yourself a suede strap that's rough on the inside. It's good. It's good. That's got some. That's to mesmerizing. It. You doing that? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's those heavy Grover tuners. It was the Gibson. 12 string J45 from last year yeah. that this gave me flashbacks to because it's very similar but that's such a heavy headstock this one does feel a little bit more balanced God, to me it makes you wonder why doesn't it is it the, you think I mean look how much so let's talk comparisons right off the bat these have nondescript guild branded and it's got the G which shield cool. on the back which is yeah. cool tuners probably ping made for guild with their their logo mm -hmm. um and this is a, definitely the same thickness of headstock. I I really I'm struggling right now, going why is it just the Grover tuners? Because these are Grover tuners, and this I is, think it was I think it's the Grovers because that Gibson one had the same exact tuners. Because the headstock's not that much bigger. No, I would say that this one's probably longer because the tuners are spaced out more. Either way, interesting interesting observations. Warned. This is why you come to this channel because who else is going to tell you? <laughs> the Epiphone's neck heavy. But it is. It is very neck heavy. But that's also an all solid wood, uh, you know, inspired by Gibson. It's true to the Hummingbird form and maybe just a cooler looking guitar. So get it's, over it with yeah. the, the weight. Look, you just, you, you take a five pound dumbbell, okay, and you hang it off of the side here and then it's fine. You're good to go. It's fine. So. No, it's really not that bad. It's not like S. Well, it is SG bad, but you know that's everything. I, I yeah. think if you go into it, it's not the first twelve string that I've picked up and done this to. Taylor uh, Taylor T five Zs that are twelve strings do this because the, the body's so body small, is like a, yeah. a pound, dude. But this, I think, this also speaks to just how lightly built. I guess the rest of it is, yeah. Because the body, you know, it's hard to isolate it, but just from the imbalance here and the overall weight, the body seems pretty light and resonant. So. Yeah. So let's talk about what they are. So. This guitar is more expensive than the Guild. It's inspired a by, bit. a little bit, yeah. right? Inspired by Gibson, imported Epiphone from Indonesia that is all solid wood construction. Yeah. So you've got the looks and you've got the build to go along with it. So Sitka spruce top. Yeah, with a nice antique cherry sunburst. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a hummingbird. Yeah. That's what you get. You get a little guitar honey if you buy it. We'll throw it in there with you. Just darken that up a little bit. Got the little butterfly up there, which my wife likes. And we've done, when we did the six-string comparison, this looks like the pick guard for a hummingbird, but they're a little different. The coloring's a little different. The Just everything, the way that yeah. it's put on the pick guard is a little bit different. It's like when you get a purse, like a Prada purse, but it says Prado. <laughs> You know, but it's like very, very Solex. similar. Solex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of kind of shades of that. You get Fishman pickup in it. It is all solid mahogany. Little back and sides, mahogany neck. Do you remember what the fretboard is on this rosewood? I want to say jo that's Indian laurel. To Jobo, yeah, it probably. I is think laurel. that's Indian laurel. Um, and then over here, from the Westerly collection of Guild's import guitars, um, 
F2512, right? That's is a, that what I said? I think I said 2152. I think you said 20, look if this the, is look a 2512, because it's, What's I don't say? even need to look. You know how I know that? <laughs> because it's an F, that's a jumbo body style. Right. It starts with a two. That's Break it down for us. Laminate back and sides. Okay. Five is the jumbo, like the uh -huh. F150 that we did the yeah. other day. 12, 12 string. There you it's go. It's 2512. If you've gotten this far in the video, you know, I made a mistake earlier. That's, that's all <laughs> People I'm were already about. doing their comments yeah. and left. So. Yeah. If you comment that, I know that you didn't watch this far. Um, spruce top, laminate maple back and sides. Some of the most beautifully figured maple I've ever seen. I'm just kidding. But I it was is. Say, yeah, no. You need to get out more. <laughs> Gotta get out. Um, and then I'm guessing that fingerboard is probably some variation of something. Yeah, I think it's rosewood. You think um, they got a, a little rosewood on there? It yeah, looks like I, it. Yeah, I know that they stopped doing that for a while, and like many, they're returning back to it because of the sidey mm -hmm. stuff has been relaxed. Um, and then, of course, it's got the the same Fishman pickup in there, just gill branded. This is a 1.75 inch nut. That is a 1.88 inch nut. That seems rather narrow, a one and three quarter inch nut for a 12 string guitar. Yeah. Yeah. But the. You notice it, uh, I mean, it's just weird because the the neck is so thin mm -hmm. that it makes it feel probably thicker than it is. You yeah. Know, it's kind of weird. Both of these necks feel thin because, well, at least with this one, it's so wide. Yeah. I don't know that the neck is actually that thin. It just feels that because being a 12 string, it is so Playing wide. Playing a trick on you. So. But I got to play these today, um, and I did like some strumming, some picking, and I have my thoughts on why I like them, but trust me, I'll try to tune them both exactly to perfect pitch. It's not gonna be there. So you need a little bit of that chorus -y effect. I think it's my- what so, the 12 strings That's what man. it's for, yeah. So You know that old Tootsie Roll Pop commercial? How many licks yeah, does it take? Yeah. Mr. Owl. Yeah, well, it's the yeah. same thing with 12 strings. How long does it take to tune a 12 string? The world may never know. That's true. So. Let's let's take a listen because I got my opinions, but I want to hear yours too. All right, check it out.
And there you have it. These are both 12 string guitars that sound like 12 string guitars. They sound good to me. End of the video. No, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, we, I checked. We checked. So what was the fingerboard? We got uh, Pal Ferro over here. Pal Ferro. Pal In, Ferro. Indian Laura. Laurel. Laura. Whatever. Hi, Laura. Hi, hi Laura. That's Indian, Indian Laura. Yes. And this is Pal Gasol, dude. <laughs> there you go. Just now, a couple buddies now of Now you'll ours. remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so great guitars. Before we talk price, because there's a price difference here. Yeah. And there's a build difference here we already discussed. I'd like to hear your thoughts both on the tone you liked, kind of the response, and the playability. Yeah. Because playability, if it's ever important on an acoustic guitar, especially 12 strings. Yeah. Uh, so for me, the I talked about tuning. I think, and it might just be my own ear and preference, I'm sure everybody else heard variations of that truth. Um, this one felt like it was in closer tune with itself. This one felt like it was a little bit off, and I preferred it because it was within a few cents, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it provided a more natural chorus. I let an E chord ring out at the very end, and I think if you're listening closely, you can hear the notes interact with each other differently uh, between these two. And I kind of just preferred this one. It gave me a flashback to that J45 12 string because that's yeah. something that I loved about that guitar. It was almost phasey, you know, like really interesting kind of effect. So I, I like that one a little bit more, but I do think for the price, which we'll get into, it's, it was so close in terms of they both do a really good job at being an affordable 12 string that I would never fault somebody for going for this one because it's a, it'll do the job. And I think this is the perfect price point for a 12 string too. Yeah. I mean, this is, it's a range. If you're but, adding it to your collection, yeah, so to speak. If yeah. you're gonna play it for one or two songs in a set or throw it in the background of a recording, you don't need to get a two up thousand dollar guitar like that J45. They're nice uh, and they're beautiful. And if you're we work at a music store selling guitars, man, you absolutely need the most expensive one. If you're Tom Petty, the next Tom Petty, because nobody's <coughs> Tom Petty right, right. now, um, and you're jamming out in front of like you know an all star band and you're strumming twelve strings, get yourself like an incredible, you know. ES-335 12 string or some insane D-35 12 David Gilmore edition. If you're like anybody else, this is a perfect price to be at, you know? So price on this one. That's an $899 right there. 900 bucks, no case, no gig bag, all solid wood construction, and it's got the looks. It's got that classic. She's got the look. Yeah. 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 It's got that classic Gibson Hummingbird look to it. Um, good guitar, good value. Really nice value. But, so this one trims the value by being laminate. And mm -hmm. Guild does have import all solid 12 strings, we should say. But uh, by being laminate back and sides with a solid top and coming with a gig bag and a pickup, um, you know, how much is that one? We got a 529 guy over here, which pretty good. Yeah. That's good for me. Yeah, that's a over $400 price difference. Yeah. Playability wise, both good. Both really good. I I think on a 12, I prefer a, as wide as the nut can yeah. go, you know, and it's gonna- You need the space. You need the space. It's gonna sacrifice your ability to, to do certain things that you're probably used to on a six string. I mean, I always put the thumb over the top. It starts getting a little uncomfortable there because you try to do all the same things. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be very different. You just gotta get used to it. But the string separation on there feels like just the perfect kind of Goldilocks amount. Uh, you know, I'm really, I wish that more manufacturers would do the Taylor style and go switch, it. switch the octaves because yeah. I think that's such a... You can do it yourself, but you have to take it in to have the nut redone unless you're handy with that kind of thing. Yeah. But otherwise, I'd there's no structural issues try. with like switching. Yeah. I just, that that's something that probably with the high octave on top, mm -hmm. it emphasizes what you're doing. You know, it emphasizes that you're adding that whole higher octave, makes it sound more like a 12 string probably. But there's just something about the way Taylor does it that I think is, is pretty neat. Yeah, Doyle Dykes does it that way. There's a number of players that prefer the reverse. I think it comes down to playing style. If you're just strumming, I don't think it matters. Their normal setup's fine. But if you're trying to emphasize particular notes, yeah. flat picking or finger style with runs and whatnot, yeah. then having that bass string emphasized first is important yeah. absolutely 
What, which one, like, if you're going to add one of these into your collection, which do you lean towards? Well, I really like the setup on the, the Hummingbird. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually nicer than the setup on another inspired by Gibson guitar we played today, which is interesting given that it's twice the strings and twice the tension. Uh, but I think that speaks to, you know, that could be one of the reasons it's heavy is the size of the truss rod. Or, if, yeah, it's only got the one, I think, but it's... Uh, it's substantial to deal with all of that that tension on there. If you didn't infer by the original conversation from pre-demos, the tuners on that one, much smoother, you know, because they're Grovers. They're Grovers. These are totally fine, but it's a lot of that kind of, you know? Yeah. And you can kind of feel just a little bit of what we always talk about, nut slots creaking. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Grovers on there, it's like a chore that you have to dive into to tune a 12 string every single time. This one was already tuned because it was on the floor. I just need to make a couple, uh, you know, adjustments. This one was way out of whack and it was much easier to tune, much more accurate. And, but, you know, but you didn't when, get it quite, quite as close. Well, because I think since I was just tuning it up, it was getting there, falling out yeah. a little bit. So yeah. the strings needed to stretch. But when, because I have like a, kind of updated tuner that I've been using that will show you like exactly how many right. cents off and everything. And it was much easier to get right there and stay there. It was just the newness of the guitar, I think, that was pulling it out. I think they're both huge values for a better, I mean, there's like $300 12-string acoustic guitars, right? But I think that's a huge step up from that price point as far as playability and the sound mm -hmm. and kind of the features that you get with it with the pickup and the case and everything. And I like jumbo 12 strings. Yeah. I think the body shape works well because it's balancing out all of the jangle that you have from the octave strings. I really like the look, the feel of this. I love the the finish on these inspired by Gibsons. It's kind of a almost like a semi-gloss, knocked down gloss finish um, that's real smooth. So I like that a lot. And despite the neck heaviness, it's otherwise a very, very comfortable guitar. Yeah. I love the playability on it. And you know, with 12 strings, this is a controversial opinion, but some people argue how important solid wood construction is because there's so much of that jangle that you're hearing a lot of string and less of the guitar body. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that makes it somewhat more important yeah. because you're, you're trying to balance all of these different aspects of the you know twice as many strings, the jangliness of it, uh, which you want, but you don't want it to just be too bright and in your yeah. face. Um, incidentally, these are great for, you know, if you're playing and performing and you need a 12 string, do you, you know, or maybe you don't, what they do for recordings historically in Nashville when you need a 12 string? Nashville strung guitar, mm -hmm. which is what I do actually. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, take, get yourself a 12 string set, throw the low octaves on one guitar or just keep them for later, but take the high octaves and just string up a normal six string pan them left and right, uh, and you got a better tuned 12 yes. string, which sounds pretty special. And especially if you can get them hard panned, it, you're living inside of a 12 string guitar. What do you, you use for that high strung guitar? I use an Ovation. You do? Because that's the one that I'm not too concerned about <laughs> bringing out to a gig. GS um, Minis have become a hot commodity for that. Yeah, I think um, that's perfect. And before that, it was Baby Taylor's. You know, Ted really wants to do like an A-strung uh, Baby Taylor. I like think. a terse guitar. Yeah, yeah, that'd be very cool. Uh, the first I remember the first time I saw Baby Taylor being used from that, there's this great album. Uh, Scott King, Phil Keggy, and... No, Wes King, Scott Dente, and Phil Keggy. They did this trio called Imagination or something. It was just three guitar guys going insane. And, <laughs> Too much guitar. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it's an awesome album, but in the liner notes, it says, like, you know, it, you know that this album was guitar guys for guitar guys because they list all their gear on every single oh song. Oh, gosh. And what, one of them that kept popping up was, was Nashville Strung or High Strung Baby Taylor. And I was like, Interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. But hey, if instead of having two guitars, you could just do the one and get the tall string sound. Yeah. So if you had to choose, which one would you get? I'm going for the Hummingbird. I like the look a lot. I mean, I think this is a fantastic guitar for the price. If I if I wanted something in this kind of sub thousand dollar range, mm -hmm. I'd probably pay a little bit more, get the all solid wood, and 
I love the look. You know, yeah. I think for a nice 12 string sound, I'm thinking mid to late 60s. Uh, you know, it's not the best time in Gibson's history, but that's the look of yeah. the time. You know, I think this fits kind of the whole aesthetic that I would be going for. Um, if I was, if I had my own recording studio and I had bands coming in and I wanted to inspire them to throw a 12er on, I'd get this one because it's going to do the job. Yeah. I think I would get the Guild. Yeah. Um, and if I was going solid wood, I would just buy something. I would go ahead and, you know, th that's always a kind of a, an argument. Like, this is a huge value because it's solid wood construction, imported, getting it under $1,000. Yeah. But for some reason, I tend to go, well, if I'm going to, to get, buy an all solid wood guitar, I'll just yeah. spend more and get the U.S. made. Thing, yeah, so that's fair. Uh, but I think the guilds are a good value, and I really like jumbo body, so I would yeah. go that route. So Both there you go. We're, we're, yeah. we're divided on it. That's, that's all good. Good guitars. There's a lot of good 12 strings that we've had the pleasure of playing, and a lot that we have in stock. Besides these two, I think we just got one of those Grand J16 mm -hmm. 12 strings in from Martin. We've done several videos on before. Really good option for a little bit of a step up from here. But where would they go if they wanted to see those, Cooper? If you want to see that or, say, Taylor 150, something like that, I think you got to go to alamomusic.com because we are in a special position to have a lot of good 12ers in right now. You can uh, just look at them all. There is a thing, though, that Cooper likes to point out if you're shopping Gibson or Epiphone on our website, and that is that you cannot add that to cart. So you want to give us a call. You can chat with people and ask questions, but we cannot sell you a Gibson or an Epiphone on our website. For reasons. We're living in the Middle Ages over here. And those reasons are for a podcast. So, uh, at some point. <laughs> Anyways. Let's do the list of grievances on the podcast, because we got a lot. As an independent music store, let's talk yeah. about it. Anyways, so hopefully you liked this video, you got something out of it. If you're looking for a 12-string, like we said, we've got a lot to choose from right now. Visit us online, chat with someone, come, come in, call or email, whatever. We want to help you find the right guitar for you, because at the end of the day... The best 12 string in the world is the one that you can manage to play and keep in tune and make music with and be inspired by. And I will say this, I think I think 12 strings and baritones and uh, sm like small high strung guitars, like things like that, if you are ever stuck in a musical rut, can really inspire you. And so I often encourage people who are adding to their guitar collection to look elsewhere, to look outside of just a different body shape or a different tone wood to a different style of guitar that you can add, really grow your uh, collection and be inspired as you play. So uh, so that's that's my take on it. Get a 12 string for those reasons uh, or just because they're beautiful. So if you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos and keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time.